Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to the 6.30 p.m. edition of News, this 22nd day of April 2022. My name is Von Quinta. I'm being live from Duala, Cameroon's economic capital. Begin today's edition of Prime News in the Northwest region, where farmers and grazers in Kecha village Menchum subdivision have uh, set up a committee to manage peace and dialogue to finalize a four-month project by B. Dumlem Humanitarian Association for Peace and Hope and the United Nations Development program. Charles Kewa reports from Bameda. The Kuta community in Aram Womb Center subdivision, Mentum Division of the Northwest, through a common ground between farmers and grazers, have set up a managing peace dialogue committee for farmers and grazers' effective conflict management and peace building. Peace. And when we talk peace, we should do peace. Kuta is a village that has almost been extinct because of the cattle grazer issue. And our prayer as clergymen in Rome and in Mentum as a whole, we want peace. We want that people should go back to their different communities and let life begin again. And we give the thanks to the CEO of Bindulem, who has taken the initiative to organize such a gathering this day and invite the men of God to come and pray. Both the Christian community and the Muslim community. Closing a four months project UNDP behalf, April 21st, 2022, culminated with a solemn ecumenical service, bringing both communities, the Arabs and Muslims, cultural animation, handball and football encounter, equally installed key peace committee members. I'm here to participate to see into if that peace come back to the church. And as a member of Indum Lum, I am here today to assure the Northwest Regional House of Assembly that this is going to return, that you got it from the people of Kocha, from the dances that you saw. They are ready to come back to Kocha. I'm happy with the, with the behalf office that has given us the training for the past four months. And for, for them, for thing of us, that they will come and will bring this peace in this our municipality. Now that we need peace. And the farmers and grazers too, they are ready for the peace. They have embraced the, our, 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 uh, our committee. Uh, if you can see, they come to us every day. Through a peaceful and sustainable community dialogue by Bindumlum Humanitarian Association for Peace and Hope, to ensure the rehabilitation of the displaced population, Mentum Administration Tank, behalf with support from her partners, said will help support administration action on the field. The committee, a special ad hoc committee coming from uh, the, the association Binundu, that is going to help and support the action of the administration on the field. So we really hope that they are support alongside our own efforts, uh, we are going to have a, a, an excellent result in the following the upcoming uh, weeks and months. To Madam Drambon Bibiana, CEO of Behalf, having witnessed significant change in the way the farmers and grazers resolve their issues. <laughs> to keep committee members and prize giving award grace the day. Now, barely four months after the launch of the voters' registration, close to 5,000 new voters have enrolled into the electoral register in the northwest region of Cameroon. The exercise that was launched on January 2, 2022, has witnessed a considerable increase from 2021. Emanuela Moni completes the story. 
Statistics from the Northwest Regional Delegation of Elections Cameroon, ELECAM, indicate that voters' registration in 2021 was timid with a record of just 125 registered voters. According to ELECAM Northwest Regional Delegate Nga Gaspar, the situation has improved this year with already registered 4,852 electors. Mesam Division is the highest with 2,654 registered voters. The ongoing socio-political stalemate and the COVID-19 pandemic are affecting the situation of voters' registration in the region. Officials of the Northwest Regional Delegation of Elections Cameroon say they envisage getting 11,000 registered voters by August 31st this year. Over in the southwest region from June 8 to June 12, 2022, the city of Limbe shall uh, be a major de destination for lovers of culture. This was a major announcement uh, during the press briefing that took place at the palace of the Limbe Royal Chiefdom to launch activities of the coronation and enthronement of the paramount ruler of Limbe, Kuma Onore, complete the story. This press briefing marks the official launching of activities geared towards the coronation of the first class chief of Limbe, His Royal Majesty John Elufa Manga William, whose designation was confirmed by a Prime Ministerial Order number 004-PM-13 January 2022 to fill the vacant stool of the Paramount Chief 17 years after the demise of His Royal Majesty Ferguson Manga William on April 9, 2005. Going by the chairman of the organizing committee, Mr. Paul Luma Hardison, the press briefing today is not only to express their inestimable happiness, but also to say that they are poised to crown their new king come reign or son. The major announcement for this press conference is that the coronation of His Royal Majesty Chief John Elufa Manga Williams shall be a five days event spanning from the 8th to the 12th of June 2022. The traditional coronation shall take place on Friday the 10th of June at the historic jungle village of the Limbe Botanic Gardens while the official ceremony will take place on Saturday the 11th of June at the Limbe Centenary Stadium. A Thanksgiving service shall close the festivities on Sunday the 12th in yet another iconic place, the Limbe Ebenezer Baptist Church Down Beach. Meanwhile, an ecumenical service shall open the five days event. Also, eye-catching cultural manifestations shall spice the first four days. In this kingdom, you have all chiefs. And so, as I read in my speech, the culture was actually not lost. But today, we are happy that we can fill that seat I don't know, we watch all of these things in films. The chairman further stated that ever since the Prime Ministerial Order confirming the designation of His Royal Majesty, Chief John Elufa Manga William, the process to enthrone the king was set in motion. Men and women of goodwill in and out of the country have engaged themselves in making sure this dream becomes a reality. A steering committee has been put in place to pilot the general organization. Committees were later created and chairpersons appointed. These committees have worked on their plans and budgets. The Finance Committee has been scrutinizing the various budgets to line them along realistic projections. He added that there are equally a battery of resource persons from whom they shall benefit from their inputs. The custodians of the traditions and cultures of this place, they can follow their everyday and everyday. Because they have everybody who wants to go with us, and we believe that we are not being discriminated. And we definitely pull together our resources as stakeholders in the various uh, aspects in which we know best, in which we operate, whether economic operators, political operators, social, cultural operators, so that together we can bring this back forward. For five days running, from the 8th to the 12th of June 2022, Limbe shall be a major destination for all lovers of culture and also for many who see Limbe as a touristic haven. 
still have a Cameroon reactant who has requested the presence of some individuals for the 2022 annual summit in the United States of America. This was made known in a release signed by the president of the Kenzo, which is aimed at providing information to participants on local business opportunities. Cynthia Azanu has more. The Cameroon Royal Council, Cam Royals, have requested the presence of some individuals for the 2022 annual summit in the United States of America. A release signed by the president of this council, Chief Bajong Behaitri, says the previous summits have been successfully featuring economic and cultural forums while the year 2022 will a summit of networking and information exchange from July 29th to August 1st, 2022. However, highlights of this summit include the Baltimore Kribi Sister City, trade missions, Royal Gala, and a cultural festival under the theme Love Conquers All. In addition, the purpose of the summit is to provide information to conference participants with regard to local business opportunities on subject matters experts and government official knowledge in banking or lending, trade, agriculture, tourism, retail, textile and other arts. Cam Royals, which has as motto, Royalty for Progress, was established in August 2010 as a non-profit community partner of Montgomery County, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., with mission to advance the well-being and safeguard the rights and education of needy communities addressing the needs of women, children, youths, and adults, with a view of empowerment and cultural preservation. It is worth noting that the event will be held with no cost of attendees with registration required on the website www.camroyals.org or at email camroyals at gmail.com. A new platform known as EDUCA has been created for the betterment of the educational sector in Cameroon. The multi-stakeholder strategic alliance of civil society for the respect of rights of education was launched recently in Bavusam, West Region of Cameroon. Get details in this report with Joan Gong. The EDUCARE platform was created to tackle burning issues in the educational sector of Cameroon. This, especially in matters concerning violence in the school milieu, have hazard selection of school curriculums, underfinancing of education, deplorable teaching and learning conditions, among others. The education that is given to our own children, we don't only send children and then we contribute money and then we remain behind without making a follow-up to look into the quality of education because. The main aim of sending our children to school is so that they should at least at the end achieve something. It is not only that we give money and they will remain behind. The alliance involves education stakeholders in the country, both individuals and organizations. Most of our organization are civil society organizations and we are doing individual work to better the education in Cameroon. Now we need an alliance to carry out something because we know that as individual organization it's not easy to succeed. So we want all the people involved in this education to be uh, with us so that we can change the policy, so that we can do concrete action so that the education is well done in this country. Educare is coming at a time where the OTS movement is yet to definitely confirm satisfaction following government's proposed measures to solve teachers' grievances. Now Muslims in Cameroon who have been fasting for the month of Ramadan since April 3, 2022, who soon reach the end of their 30-day year fast as the feast of Ramadan, will be celebrated in Cameroon on the 2nd or 3rd of May. This information is contained in a communique signed by the, by the National Lunar Crescent Commission made public on April 20. Get details with Mwanze in Joyoko. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar observed by Muslim faithfuls worldwide. The feast of Ramadan will be celebrated in Cameroon on May 2nd or May 3rd, 2022. This was made known to the public on April 20th, 2022 
by the National Lunar Crescent Commission. Since April 3, 2022, Muslim faithfuls have been fasting and praying for the Feast of Ramadan. These 30 days of penitence will end with the appearance of the crescent moon. According to the press release by the National Lunar Crescent Commission, if the crescent moon is seen in Cameroon on May 1st, the Feast of Ramadan will take place on May 2nd, 2022. This will bring an end to the 30 days of prayers and fasting. While waiting for May 1st, Muslim faithfuls continue with fasting, worship, invocation, prayers, forgiveness and sharing actions encouraged during this period of Ramadan. In this report, our center regional correspondent took interest in the northwest the regalia used mostly during events, whereas it could be used more often. What accounts for this trend? Connect them with details. <laughs> The Northwesterner is indoors with variety of traditional music. Oh, oh. Cameroon's cultural value is rich in diversity and most tribes share common values in terms of attire, food, music, just to name these. The Northwesterner is known for the consumption of achu and yellow soup in the Mankun clan and some other neighboring villages like Bafut who uphold a common tradition. Cameroon, with her cultural heritage, falls back to the days of old where the traditional regalia with few designs was highly valued. However, with the advent of modernity, the traditional fabric has lost its value through increased designs. What can be accountable for this? I don't know whether is it because people cannot afford for money to buy, but we have the simplest one that everybody can buy. But honey, you get somebody from the uh, on, on the road with a dress, except people are going for a ceremony, which is not nice. How can the situation be remedied? I pray that if there is a situation that consideration is given to traditional art to go out of Cameroon land, our own industry, then produce locally for our own We will boost the economy of the local producers and the villagers who are engaged in this virus. Our culture, our heritage should be highly considered in this generation because if you don't know where you are coming from, you cannot know where you're going to. The Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises has inaugurated the Handicraft Centre in Bamayo. The centre, according to Minister Basilikin, who trained over 460 Cameroonians who are passionate in the sector, Kathrini Kongwe, tells us more. The new coordinator of the Bamayo Handicraft Village in the centre region and her close collaborators have been officially installed into function during the installation ceremony that coincided with the inauguration of the center the minister of small and medium-sized enterprises social economy and handicraft ashil basiliken three said the village will host over 460 talented young and old people who have a special passion for the craft sector in terms of rattan bamboo and uh, wood related craft the main reason why this special handicraft village has been erected here is to provide an opportunity to craftsmen to be not only empowered, but at the same time to develop their skills. Installing the management of officials in the center will enhance the training of young stars in a bid to help the handicraft industry emerges. We expect that uh, we will have more and more handicraft enterprises and uh, from there the business will flow. Handicrafts remain an important source of income for the population of the Nyong and Saw Division. Thus, the inauguration of this handicrafts center, which is built on an area of 240 meters square, will go a long way to help this sector.
Today, April 22, is commemorated as a World Health Day. The day serves as a reminder for us to protect the environment, restore damaged ecosystems, and live a more sustainable life. It is observed this year under the theme, Invest in Our Planet. Bokengo Wadi tells us more. Climate disruption, loss of biodiversity, air pollution, earthquakes, drought, environmental breakdown, and many more are hazards plaguing the earth, triggered by human's inability to keep and preserve nature. Today is International Mother Earth Day. It is a chance to reflect on how humanity has been treating our planet. The truth is we have been poor custodians of our fragile home. Today, the Earth is facing a triple planetary crisis, climate disruption, nature and biodiversity loss, pollution and waste. The triple crisis is threatening the well-being and survival of millions of people around the world. The building blocks of happy, healthy lives, clean water, fresh air, a stable and predictable climate are in disarray, putting the Sustainable Development Goals in jeopardy. According to the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, saving and preserving Mother Earth depends on each and all for many reasons than one. We have seen what is possible when we act as one. We have shrunk the ozone hole. We have expanded protection for wildlife and ecosystems. We have ended the use of leaded fuel, preventing millions of premature deaths. And just last month, we launched a landmark global effort to prevent and end plastic pollution. Laying emphasis on global unity for Mother Earth, he states, We must limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees, and we are far off track. To keep 1.5 alive, governments must have cut emissions by 45% by 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Many emitters must drastically cut emissions starting this year. Like an abused person, the earth is crying, seemingly bleeding, and on the verge of breaking down if we don't stop some of our daily malpractices such as burning of fossil fuel, public waste dumping, overgrazing, deforestation, and other environmental malpractices. Out of the country, the French government has officially handed over the keys of the Gossi military base to Mali in a major step towards the departure of France's anti-jihadist forces from Mali. Development of these and more right ahead. We begin at tour on the African continent in South Africa where communities affected by the devastating floods that killed at least 448 people in the eastern city of Durban are trying to salvage whatever is left of their belongings as rescue and search operations continue to find missing persons. Joint civilian and military search teams are still recovering corpses from the debris more than a week after the disaster struck. So far, 400 soldiers were deployed out of the 10,000 promised. Authorities say several areas are still inaccessible, hampering the delivery of relief aid after bridges and roads cracked under the weight of the worst floods to hit the country. Away from the floods in South Africa, in a major step towards the departure of France's Bakin anti-jihadist force from Mali, the French army has officially handed over the keys of the Gossi military base to Mali. Some 4,600 French soldiers are currently deployed in the Sahel, including 2,500 in Mali, which should change little before the handover of the Menaki and Gao bases. France announced in February it was to begin a military withdrawal from Mali after more than nine years of fighting a jihadist insurgency. Gassi is the fourth base to be returned to Malian forces following the return of three northern bases, Kidal, Thessalit, and Tibungtu last year. On to health, more than one million children in Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi have now received at least one dose of the first malaria vaccine that are provided by the World Health Organization, such as that the pilot program launched in April 2019 was safe and substantially reduced severe cases of the disease. The RTSS vaccine could save the lives of 40,000 to 80,000 children per year in sub-Saharan Africa and high-risk areas. The World Health Organization further stated that about 90% of the world's malaria cases are in Africa, where 260,000 children die each year.
And in sports, Canon returns to victory after securing a series of safe passes against New Stars during the third day of play of the ongoing MTN Elite One Championship. Meanwhile, all running clubs are fastening their belts to be crowned champion to Lingondi with details. Tenth day of the MTN Elite One Championship in Group A smiled at Canon Sportive. After two consecutive defeats, the young club returns to victory. The young club has regained its form from the start of the championship. After five victories followed by two consecutive draws, the men of Mincreo Bewa found their way back to success during their last game at the 10th day in Group A of the MTN Elite One Championship. However, the Mekok Magonda, who faced Fovo as you, played with fire. But thanks to a double from Prizo Eyango and a penalty goal from Henry Chico, they won 3-0 after leading 2-1 at the break. In Group B, we play the ninth day of the championship, and it is another satisfying day for Coton Sportive, which seems to have definitely turned the page on its first five games without a win. Gabriel Haman's players won their third consecutive success by defeating Bambutus of Buddha, two goals to zero. Mamudu Hassana and Suhaibu Umaru scored late in the game. At the Bafu Samba Menzi Stadium, the Union Sports Movement, UMS, waited for its opponent in vain. The New Stars players did not show up at the stadium. They reportedly boycotted the meeting in protest. The players were accused several months of salary arrears. We've come to the end of the 6.30 p.m. edition of News on My Media Prime Television. Coming up at exactly 7 p.m. is Prime Hour with Kum Leonard and his team. My name is Fon Quinta. Have a blessed weekend in the company of more programs on My Media Prime Television. Good night.